morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of our attendees joining us today for this latest Data Science Central webinar. This is Bill Voorhees, your host. I'm the Editorial Director with Data Science Central and also Chief Data Scientist for Data Magnum. So I'd like to start off our event today by thanking IBM for sponsoring today's event. IBM is a longtime supporter of the Data Science Central community, and we're honored to have them sponsoring our event today. I'd also like to take this opportunity to mention and show our appreciation for some of our other recent sponsors, including DataRobot, Alteryx, IBCO, Databricks, Tableau, and Semantic, to name just a few. Now, past webinars are available on demand at datasciencecentral.com, and if you haven't had the opportunity to view them, I encourage you to take a look. They provide some very useful insight into a wide variety of topics that are of interest to our data science community. Now, today's webinar is entitled, SPSS Statistics to Predict Cons Customer Behavior, to be presented by IBM. But before we begin, I'd like to briefly review the format of today's webinar. Today's event will be an hour long. Uh, we'll have two presenters who I'll introduce in just a minute. There'll be 10 or 15 minutes of QA following the presentation. And this event is being recorded and will be available on datasciencecentral.com later this afternoon following today's live event. Now, I'd also like to encourage our attendees to provide questions throughout the presentation. We'll be reviewing and presenting them on your behalf during the QA portion of today's event. Well, I'm very pleased to introduce today's speakers, Taylor Perez and Morale Prakash with IBM. Now, Taylor Perez is a client technical specialist in IBM Analytics, supporting SPS Statistics and Modeler. He's always had an interest in technology and data analysis and has been working with clients of different industries across the United States. Taylor holds an engineering degree from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Now, Morale Prakash is a portfolio marketing manager in the IBM Analytics Technical Marketing Team and currently leads the IBM SPSS Statistics product line. He's been with IBM for more than six years. Uh, you can call him a data enthusiast at heart. Right from the day he graduated, he's been involved in many roles, solving real-world problems with analytics. Morale is a recognized subject matter expert on predictive analytics and has worked with many clients across industries and geographies. He has graduated with a master's in statistics and a master's in information technology from the University of Glasgow. So, uh, Taylor Morale, thanks for being with us today. We're looking forward to your presentation. Now, in today's world, every organization is collecting and storing massive amounts of data about their customers. In order to take full advantage of this data, you should be equipped with the right tools that are powerful, easy to use, and able to draw accurate conclusions in understanding the motivations behind customer behaviors. Now, these tools will allow you to derive new insights, aiding in the decision-making process. So in this Data Science Central webinar, you'll see firsthand how IBM SPSS statistics will enable you to quickly understand large and complex data sets using advanced statistical procedures, ensuring high accuracy to drive quality decision making, reveal deeper customer insights, and provide better confidence intervals via visualizations and new analytical techniques, and build a predictive enterprise making the business more agile and maximizing return on investment. So Morale, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to you. You can begin as soon as you're ready to go. Thank you very much, Bill. Um, so, folks, um, again, this is uh, Murali Prakash from IBM, and um, I would like to welcome you today for today's webinar on SPSS statistics predicts customer behavior. So, even before I could get on to, to the agenda of what the webinar is going to be today, I know, I would like to answer, you know, I would like you to ask, answer. Um, a simple poll question that we have for you there, you know, what best describes your role within your organization? There's so many roles up right there, so you can just choose, you know, which, which is really close to what you're doing today within your organization. And I would just leave about a couple of seconds right there, even before I move to the next one.
Okay, so that's perfect. Thank you very much for you know answering the poll question. So that's pretty much what exactly what we have today, and this really gives us the edge to shape up the content, shape up really the direction of how this webinar, how the session is going to go today uh, from here, right? So business analyst, data scientist, statistician, researcher, executive, analytics executive, other. So great. So we have plenty of people sitting on business analyst, data scientist, and this is exactly what we are actually going to be um, looking today in terms of, you know, um, the webinar and its content. So, so quickly moving on to the agenda for what we have today is uh, very simple. <laughs> So we're going to look at what is exactly, you know, what do your customers want? Do you really understand your customers pretty well today, right? And then we're going to talk about the different types of data that we have and then how exactly we're going to use predictive analytics, you know, to be able to make decisions by using, our, by using the data sets that you have and how much are you really putting it to use? You know, that's what it, we, you know, we're going to discuss, we're going to see as we just, you know, go through this webinar today. And also, we'll talk about customer centricity. And more importantly, we're going to, right from there, we're going to build a bridge, you know, between all this about, you know, your customers and how you're going to actually know your customers pretty well. And then we're going to introduce you to the predictive analytics platform of IBM SPSS. And we're also going to go deep dive on one of the tools that we have within the platform is IBM SPSS statistics. And later on, we're going to, we're going to have a live demonstration about um, you know, IBM SPS statistics, how exactly it tries, you can use to try and predict customer behavior, okay, whatever the customer data sets that you have, and then uh, we will open the floor for Q&A towards the end. So quickly jumping on right here, you know, this is one question definitely uh, <laughs> a lot of people will be thinking about, you know, what do your customers want, right? Do you really know your customers pretty well? So what are you doing today to know your customers pretty well? What kind of data you have? What kind of things that you're actually storing, collecting, analyzing, and at the same time trying to make decisions based on your customers? Are your customers happy with you? All right? So there's so many questions. You know, the moment we actually talk about a business, the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, are my customers happy? You know, are we giving, you know, an amazing customer experience to our customers. You know, this is typically where we're thinking about, you know, where we're going to, uh, today and where we're talking about it from the customer's point of view. And this is, you know, we, we've always heard the, you know, old and fast rule, you know, customers are the king, right? So how well do we know customers? If you're actually storing any kind of data about your customers, you know, how exactly are you using them? What are you trying to do with those data sets? You know, is it really making sense? So there are so many questions that are right up there. And today, the customers, you know, it's not like about, you know, five years or 10 years ago where, you know, really we, we had a lot of information, but still we didn't know too much about, uh, too, much, too much information about our customers. For example, today, the customers really want you to know pretty well, you know, find me, right? Or know me pretty well. And this is exactly what's going on today. For example, you know, they want you to offer the products and services exactly based on their needs and their designs, their wants. So we can't really, you know, <laughs> send some, you know, I think we used to send a lot of blast emails before, like, you know, about 10 years ago, literally, you know, almost to all, everybody, and we really didn't know who it, who it was and who was answering, who was, who was opening the e emails or, you know, who was interested in what. But today, I think everything is just coming down to personalization. So very, very importantly, people, customers, everybody is looking at, you know, how exactly you're treating them, how much you know about them, and what exactly they want, and if, they are able to, and if you're able to provide them what exactly they want. So find me, be available, you know, wherever I am. For example, you know, customers really want you to communicate with them within their terms, within their platforms, whether it's on social media, whether you're using Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, or you can use any other communication channels which they're comfortable with. So, you know, that's exactly where we are. And at the same time, if you, if you really look into more, you know, people really want to be educated. It's just not about giving more information, but at the same time trying to, you know, bring them up to speed. You know, what exactly are you doing to your customers to bring them up to speed, educating them, right? And at the same time, you know, it's, today I think a lot of data is just flowing in. It's, it's, it's about location, ideas, everything. So you're trying to basically, you know, return for better products and value for your customers. So there, there is like tons of things about customers. Now, 
the one thing I really want to say to you guys is, you know, be there for them anytime, anywhere, right? And for that, what we need to do. So we need to really understand what, what we have today for making those decisions or giving that better customer experience to our customers, right? Now, data. Now, this is where I really want to bridge the gap from you to, you know, where we're going today, right? Today, I think we have really been accessing all kinds of data, right? It's not about just about the descriptive data, attributes, characteristics of the customers, you know, demographics, great. So you have all this information. And today, we are also looking at interaction data as well, where you're looking at emails and chats and transcripts and then calls and notes if anybody calls up. You're trying to record everything. You're trying to make sure, you know, all this information is stored, collected, analyzed, and then you're able to make decisions using that data. So this is where we are heading, you know, in today's world and in the future, it's going to be much more advanced than what we are doing today. Now, at the same time, if you look at attitudinal data, which is very important because you have to know what are the prefer you know, what are the options, what are the, what are the opinions that the customer is going to have, what are the preferences that they're going to have, you know, what are the needs and desires. And obviously, we do have a tons of data about the behavioral data. You know, what, if, if, if we have existing customers, we know exactly their orders, their transactions, their payment history, their usage history. There's tons of data about the customers. Now, great. So we have so much of data, right? Interaction data, attitudinal data, and we have descriptive data, we have behavioral data. So are we really putting all this to use? Are we really taking all this information, putting it together, and really making decisions for our businesses? So that's exactly where I'm just tipping into, you know, introducing predictive analytics. So I'm sure all of you right there know exactly what predictive analytics is capable of, right? But I really wanted to highlight one, one important point right, at, right up here, right? So using all this data together, what we're trying to do is we're trying to use technology and tools, you know, predictive analytics, for example, to uncover the value of customer data. It's very, very important. It's not about, you know, looking at the customer's data on your dashboards, on your, uh, you know, information dashboards. It's more about, you know, trying to get to the next step of applying some of the predictive analytics techniques to really make decisions about your customers, right? The, the information that you're going to find, it's something which you probably wouldn't have seen before. So that's where exactly predictive analytics comes in to really talk about the patterns, the trends that you're going to have, and you know, all kinds of techniques that we're going to use, data mining, machine learning, game theory, whatnot. So trying to make sure we're trying to discover new patterns, relationships, so that we can actually make predictions, you know, on future events and future behavior of a customer so that we can actually be able to serve them better, right? So typically, I think a lot of people will be asking questions about, um, you know, why are customers leaving us? You know, there's a lot of, you know, uh, forums and questions about, you know, customers, customer churn, right? And that's happening a lot, for example, let's say, for example, a telecommunications industry, or it could be in, in retail industry. So we're looking at all aspects. We're trying to make sure that we have a 360-degree view of a customer by applying some of the techniques, some of, uh, applying some of the tools and technologies that we have that we're going to discuss in today's webinar. Now, I just really quickly want you to answer because, you know, we just discussed about... Um, Predictive analytics, we talked about data, we talked about how really important for us, you know, to sell our customers better, to talk about customer's behavior. So I just wanted to quickly, um, you know, ask you to fill this polling question. Are you currently making business decisions by applying predictive analytics to predict customer behavior? So just really want to understand where you stand today, right? A lot of people will be applying this trying to apply, trying to use, trying to get into predictive analytics. There's tons of things that's going on at this moment. So I really want, to, want you to answer this question so that you know, we exactly know where we stand. Okay. Thank you very much. There we go. So S, that's about 44%, and no, 55.9%. So, so people are still, you know, not trying to make business decisions by applying predictive analytics to predict customer behavior. So it's almost like literally 50-50, right? Now, what we're going to do is we can continue this session in terms of really understanding, you know, what you can do better if you're already applying what you can do better. At the same time, if you're not applying, what are you missing out on? 
So that's exactly where we're going to uh, lead towards the session two. Now, quickly, just jumping on uh, right here is customer centricity. Now, what I'm talking about here is we're trying to ingest all sources of data, right? We talked about all different types of data in just in the previous slide. And at the same time, what we're trying to do is we are trying to utilize advanced analytics. So I'll come back to that, you know, what exactly what I mean by there. So we're trying to use advanced analytics to explore, understand, and predict customer behavior. So the first and first important thing right here is about the data. You know, what type of data sets you have, what you're collecting, what you're, you know, storing, and what you're trying to analyze, and how exactly you're trying to do that. Right? And at the same time, after using advanced analytics, we're trying to deploy the insights that are coming out of, from the advanced analytics back into our operational systems. It could be people, it could be decisions, it could be you know, whatever you're trying to do. Right? Now, typically, I think these are the questions usually I think predictive analytics will really help you to answer uh, about your business. For example, it could be like, you know, how can I find my best customers? Right? Now, there is so, so much of data that's available, and typically there is always you know, one, one old rule which actually talks about a customer saying 80% you know, of our revenue comes from 20% of our customers, top customers. So do we really know who those customers are? Now, how do I predict preferences and behaviors of our customers so that I can serve them better? I can exactly you know, um, send that one marketing email to that customer talking about, you know, these are exactly the products that you're looking for, so why don't you just go and sign up? Right? And at the same time, you know, how can I implement all this in real time so I can actually make decisions? It could be you know, somebody sitting in a call center or somebody sitting in you know, taking, taking notes or somebody actually just doing the chat with a customer trying to know exactly what a customer needs. So do we have answers for all those questions? Right? Now, that's what we're going to do right now. Jump directly into, you know, for example, use cases. I just wanted to highlight this slide or chart right up here because you know, we have tons of predictive analytics use cases in different verticals and different industries. So a lot more you probably would have seen it is in telecommunications, banking and finance and insurance, and then we have in uh, retail, we have in energy and utilities, and there's so many verticals, including in healthcare, for example. People are trying to predict patient outcomes, you know, trying to improve the patient, uh, you know, patient, patient, uh, patient service uh, or patient care and customer satisfaction. And at the same time, you know, the police forces are trying to use predictive analytics to really predict crime even before it happens. So there are a lot of use cases, a lot of good case studies about how really people are using organizations are using predictive analytics to really help their businesses moving forward. And you can actually even just Google it or probably search in a search engine and you can really find a tons of tons of things about it, including on IBM websites. Now I quickly want you to introduce, I mean, want to introduce you to IBM SPS's predictive analytics platform, right? Now we talked about predictive analytics all, all the while, how it's going to really help you to get the 360 degree view of a customer so you can actually have, you know, give your customers a better experience, right? Now here, we're going to talk about how does it work? As an analyst, if you're sitting right there and looking at this particular chart, you know, you're looking at, Okay, all data, right? But you're looking at structured data, which we're talking about from relational databases, unstructured data, which is coming from your calls and notes, your emails, your chat transcripts, or you know, tons of other ways that you can actually get social media data, and then streaming data too, you know, which is very important today because you really want to make decisions right at the point of impact. So there are tons of data that you can actually collect. As an analyst, now what I'm thinking is, you know, I need to collect all this data and prepare it for analysis. Now this is where Really, a lot of analysts spend, you know, almost 70 to 80 percent of the time in trying to get this data transformed back into, you know, so that they can actually build uh, better models, right? So this is where you really spend a lot of time. Now, this is exactly where you need a platform. You need some tools and uh, technology which can really minimize that work, you know. So you don't have to really sit and do a lot of data preparation work, but you can actually focus on the analysis that you, can, that you want to perform so you can make better decisions for your business. Now, when you're actually looking at that one, you're looking at building these models, testing the models, testing the predictive models, and at the same time, you're trying to teach those models to learn and apply themselves. And that's where the machine learning comes into, and the platform should support it as your organizations grow. You know, I think when you're scaling it up, it's always that you have to look into all these different uh, ways that you can actually scale it up, 
with machine learning, with data models, with everything that you can actually do with the decision optimization as well, right? And then you're going to use all this different data and you can actually predict and you can use those insights to make decisions at all levels, whether it's at the people level or you're putting it back into your operational systems or at the same time, you're trying to make sure everybody within that organization is making a decision based on data, based on predictive analytics. So we have tools and technologies which really support this platform. For example, you know, we have IBM Spaces Statistics, IBM Spaces Modeler, and uh, Predictive Analytics Enterprise, and there are collaboration deployment services. There's tons of things which you can really integrate pretty well to make all this happen for your organization based on the scale, based on where you are today. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time on one of the tools which is basically used as a predictive analytics platform, which is IBM Space Statistics. Now, I think as Bill explained in the start, in the start you know, this is basically used uh, as a tool for you know, quickly understanding large and complex data sets. You know, it's got really all the advanced statistical procedures, and you, know, you can really make quick decisions based on the data sets that you have. Now, today, as the data is growing and growing, you know, it's not just about the data that you have in relational databases. You're trying to make decisions, including geospatial analysis, where you're trying to have the location data, the weather data, and you're trying to make decisions based on uh, what you can do uh, you know, better for your customers. And IBM Space Statistics really caters to you know, all different types of users. You could, you could be a business analyst. You could be a data scientist or statistician or a researcher. You can use IBM SP statistics the way you want it. So we're going to see that in white, you know. And at the same time, you, you'll be able to deploy all these different insights and results, you know, so that you can build a predictive enterprise within your organization. So as I said before, I, I, I rightly guess that, you know, because when we looked at the data that we got it from the poll results, you know, we had, I know, 25, 26% of the business analysts, and we, then we had about literally 30, you know, 29, 20, 30% of people who are going to be like data scientists, right? Now, one thing obviously comes to my mind is, right, can I use this tool? Can I use this technology? Can I use this platform even though I'm a business analyst? I'm a data scientist, right, or a statistician? Yes. Now, as I said before, it really caters to all different types of users, no matter whether you're a business analyst, whether you're a data scientist. You know, your goals might be different. The way you're going to use the tool and the technology will be different. But still, you will, you know, the end objective or the end outcome, what you're trying to expect, is definitely what IBM Space Statistics is called for. So it's got the easy-to-use interface. It's got broad array of analytics, you know, including programming, including, you know, interface to open source languages as well, where you can, you can, you can try and build models the way you want it. As I said before, very simple, you know, very easy to use. It's like got the spreadsheet like look and feel, so you don't have to really, you know, uh, spend a lot of time learning it. There's no, you know, there's not a bit of too much of learning curve involved. So pretty easy. You can just get started right away, and then you can start using it with the data sets that you have. Now, one thing I really wanted to highlight right up here is, you know, IBM Space Statistics is basically used as a top-down predictive analytics approach. You know, when we're doing predictive analytics, you know, we, we can actually have, you know, multiple approaches. One is like the top-down approach, and then we have the bottom-up approach. And, and IBM SP Statistics really serves as the top-down approach, where you can really set the hypothesis, and then you're trying to analyze your data with, with the hypothesis that you're trying to test with the, with the statistical procedures, and then you're going to uh, bring back the results using uh, those, procedure, those procedures and you're going to set your hypothesis, right? You're going to prove your hypothesis right or wrong. So that's exactly what the top-down predictive analytics uh, does. The same way you can do the bottom-up approach, we have other tools and technologies as well where you can use the bottom-up approach as well uh, using data mining techniques. So even that's possible. Now, with an IBM SP Statistics as an analytics platform, you, know, you can actually just access data in just about any format, literally any format. Right, including spreadsheets, including relational databases, including any kind of forward CSV files or whatever. Right, so you can just text files, everything. You can just club it back into IBM SP Statistics. Doesn't really take too much of time. Very simple, very easy. And you've got extensive data management and transformation tools within IBM SP Statistics. So all your data preparation needs will just really come down to uh, pretty much nothing. You know, we can just 
get your data ready for analysis within no time. And at the same time, I think you have plenty of um, statistical procedures, techniques that which you can use so that you can make decisions, right? And then about the, the end objective is, you know, you're trying to make decisions, right? So you really, really want to present your results, you know, graphically, visually, and then you really want to put this into tables or trying to make decisions or you can, including access your uh, results, everything on your uh, mobile Android devices or iPhone devices or tablets where we want it so you can quickly make decisions even on the fly. No, you don't have to really be looking into <laughs> the software itself. Now, quickly, um, moving on, I think I just really wanted to get your attention to one uh, on the, the chart here on the left-hand side of this, you know, there's a screenshot about literally the techniques that you can use, whether you're looking to correlate your data, you're trying to, you know, uh, use regression analysis or you're trying to actually do survival analysis or forecasting, no matter what the technique you're trying to use within the statistics that you have, you know, you pretty much everything is covered with an IBM Space Statistics. So you can literally put your data set and then just just go there and you can use the way you want it, whether you want to use the minute driven or you can really uh, use the command syntax of programming, you know, the way that you want it and you can actually um, make decisions or, you know, make sure the decision makers will access what, you know, you've been trying to solve. Now, the other important thing right here is, you know, it's got a very powerful visualization engine. So you can really, you know, build uh, uh, amazing charts with the chart builder that we have and in trying to visualize the way you want it, including geospatial analysis where you can, uh, you know, you can, you can pretty much put everything on the map and location and, you know, you can try and see, you can club all these things together, you know, to be able to present visually attractive uh, charts. Now, the other thing which I really wanted to, um, you know, bring your attention to is about with the tables, with the graphs, with the reports, you know, you can really put all this in a very nice format. You know, it's, you can publish it, you can do a lot more than that. And at the same time, as I said before, you can even submit this back into, you know, um, for somebody to view it on their phones, the devices, everything is so simple. All, all you have to do is just like one simple click and that's it pretty much. So you can view the results, including on your, uh, um, on your, on your smart devices. Now, I think so far what we have discussed is about, you know, having your customer data and then looking into the 360 degree view of your customer data and then trying to apply predictive analytics to that data and, you know, using IBM in space statistics and then trying to solve various problems that you're going to actually um, have. At the same time, you're trying to make sure, you know, your customer data that, we, that you have there, you know, you're trying to actually make some sense out of it so that you can actually make better decisions for your customers. So your customers won't leave you, you know, <laughs> uh, whichever business you're involved with. Now, the other important thing I really wanted to bring right here is, you know, bring your own analytics with IBM in space statistics. So today, what's happening is, you know, including the statistical techniques or the, or, or the analytical capabilities is really exploding, you know. There are so many techniques, there's so many ways that you can actually access, uh, you know, to be able to analyze data, but can you really make use of everything that's available today in the market, you know, today, uh, including open source, for example, a lot of programs and modules, which is in R, Python, everything is just right there. So you really want to use something and try to make, uh, you know, try to make use of that so that you can actually, you know, apply that for your data sets, right? And that's definitely possible using IBM SP statistics. For example, we do have something called as extensions where you can really tap, you know, any, any uh, R or Python, you know, modules and you can actually create your own extensions so that you can start using with an IBM SP statistics. Imagine if you're one of those, uh, you know, uh, lead data scientists and you have a team who have uh, a lot of business analysts who are actually not good at programming or who probably doesn't know too much of R or, or Python or anything, you know, you can just create an extension and they can start using it right away without knowing R, without knowing Python, without knowing coding. So it's as simple as that. So that's, that's what we have done with IBM SP Statistics. So with extensions, with open source interface, and, you know, you can automate things and, you know, there are tons of things that you can do the way you want it. So it doesn't matter whether you're a business analyst, you're a data scientist, you know, whether you're, you're just starting off now, you're actually in the middle somewhere, or you're, you're, you're an expert, you know, a professional who's been doing it for years, you can use it the way you want it, you know, however you want it. So as simple as that, right? Now, even before I get anywhere, I just wanted to really, <laughs> you know, take this uh, time and pass it on to uh, my colleague, Taylor Perez, you know, who's going to take you through, you know, some of the uh, most uh, amazing examples where you can actually use 
your customer data to make some sense out of it. Uh, Taylor? Thank you so much, Morali. Um, like he mentioned, I'm Taylor Perez, and as I was introduced before, I'm a client technical specialist with IBM. I've been working with both SPSS statistics and modeler in many different industries across the country, and I do have to say, like, analyzing customer data is one of, one of our most popular use cases, so I'm really happy to take you through this today. And as you can see by the blank canvas right here, this is our leading statistical tool, SPSS statistics. So this product can be used to solve a wide variety of business and research problems. Um, as you can see, it looks like a spreadsheet, but it's not relational. So changing one cell is not going to change everything in the tables. I can either go in here and import uh, click data directly into the database, into the product, or I can open up a data file, which I'm going to do right now. Now, within SPSS statistics, uh, this is a data agnostic product, which means you're not limited to these SAV files, which is a statistics file. If you need to import um, Excel, CSV, et cetera, et cetera, you're going to be able to open it in our product. So right now, I'm going to open up the demo data set that I'm going to use. And as you can see, this is our demographic data of our customers. We've got age, their marital status, what their income is, and in relation to their response to a survey question that we had, which is this column right here. So we've got a few different ways that we can view this data set. As you can see, we're in the data view right now. Let me adjust this a teeny bit. We're in the data view right now, and I'm going to go to the variable view where we can take a look at some other factors like um, what type of data do we have here, what's the label, do we have missing values, et cetera. So I'm going to go back to the data view and show you up here we have our value labels button. So let's say that for the purpose of our analysis, rather than having the words married or unmarried, we need those values to be in the binary instead. All I have to do is click this button, and we can see that now, rather than saying married or unmarried, we're in the binary where we're saying one represents you're a married customer and zero represents that you're an unmarried customer. So now that we've given you a look of what kinds of data we can bring into the product, let's look at different ways we can utilize this data. So I'm going to go up here and click on the data dropdown, and we can see that we have a lot of options for data cleansing, sorting, we have the transposing section right here that we can work with. And in this specific example, I want to select a random sample of the data set. So the way that I'm going to do this is scroll down into select cases, and I, this window is going to pop up. I'm going to say, yes, I want to select a random sample of cases, and I'm going to tell the program I only want about 5% of what I have right now. Now I'm going to go down and look into this output section right here, and I've got a few options in terms of what I want it to look like. I can either cut out all of the unselected cases um, completely by deleting the unselected cases. I can filter them out so they'll still show up but won't be included in my analysis. Or the easiest option for what I want to do right now, I can create a new data set. So I'm going to name this data set sample1. and what SPSS just did, I now have this separate data set in a different window that rather than working with about 6,000 records, I can see that I've got about 300, much more manageable source to work with. So now we're going to take a look at the transform menu. From here, we can compute new variables. We can recode into the same variables, do some optimal binning. And for my purposes, I want to do visual binning. So for this specific example, um, as you can see, we have age and years category, and it looks like we have somebody who is 42 and somebody who's 40. So for my purposes, I don't necessarily need there to be a clear distinction between those two. It will be more helpful to me, rather, if I can group people of close ages into similar categories. So I'm going to choose age and years to bin and continue from here. And now I have this visual binning um, screen up. And what I need to do is select the cut points of how I want to create these bins. So now that I have these cut points, I have two options that I can use moving forward based on whatever is most appropriate for a use case. So I can either do equal width intervals where I'm telling them where I want to start the first cut point location and how large I want it to be, or I can create bins 
where I have an equal percentiles based on scanned cases. So for example, let's say if I'm doing this, I want there to be five bins. I can see that the width of the bin is going to be about 16% of the total age numbers that I have right now. That's not extremely helpful to me. I'd like it to be more specific. So let's see if I do nine cut points. So I've got nine cut points. Each bin is about 10% of, excuse me, of my data, and I'm happy with that. So I'm going to apply this, and I'm going to name this bin variable age bin. And, I, and as I can see right here, the first bin is all values under the age of 26. In the second bin that I have, it's all the ages in between the values of 26 and 31. And you get the idea. So rather than differentiating between each individual number, I have a bin. And it gives me a little bit more information with my analysis. So right now, it's creating my one new variable. And I am going to go over here. And as you can see, now I've got a new column where rather than saying the person's age, this person's in age bin 9, so we know that they're on the upper echelon of the ages of who we are working with. And now I've got a more useful category to work with rather than just the age of our clients. So now we have the data in the form that we want. We've taken a deeper look into what kind of data we have, and now we want to analyze our data. So and a very important thing to remember about stats is that it's extremely modular, which means all capabilities can be extended upon depending on what your needs are. We have a lot of clients who will start off with maybe just our most basic version of stats. And as they build up their predictive strength within their organization, they realize, I need more firepower behind us. And that's something that we can help and adjust you with, because we know every client is different. So within this analysis, um, within the Analyze tab at the top, I'm going to go into one of our most popular options that people use, which is our custom tables. So custom tables are going to give you the ability to update a table while nesting or stacking information. So for me, like I mentioned earlier, uh, response is one of the goals that I wanted to have to see who's responding to what. Since this is going to be a more preliminary source, I'm, I don't want to see the mean of who's responding. I want to see the number of people who are responding. So I'm going to change this to count, apply to my selection, and close. And I'm kind of curious about how response is going to be affected by income category. So let me put that down as well. And another thing that I'm suspicious about is gender. I'm curious if gender is going to affect how people are going to respond as well. So I can nest income category within gender right here, and I can compare this, if a female is making a certain amount of money and a male is making the same amount of money, is that going to change their response rate to the survey? So I'm going to click OK right here and create my custom table. And as I can see, um, we've got similar patterns when it comes to females and males in terms of their response based on their income category. So um, <clears throat> particularly, we could see that between 25 to 49K, we have the highest amount of responses in both males and females. So that could be something interesting that we want to know moving forward with these clients. Another very popular option that we have is our frequencies table. This is another way to take a deeper look into your data. So I'm going to go into descriptive statistics and go into my frequencies table. And I'm going to say I want to look at, let's scroll down a little bit, how many people are actually living in the household for the clients that we have. And then let's look at what kind of vehicle are they driving? Is that going to make a difference as well? So I'm going to click OK. And my frequency table pops up here. And I can see if I'm looking at the number of people in the household, most of our clients, 38%, have one person in their household. And as we add more people in the household, we see a general trend of having less clients with that number of people. So that could be something interesting for our analysis later on. And if we're looking at what kind of vehicles are our clients driving, um, it seems to be split pretty evenly between economy, standard, and luxury with less people driving economy than standard and luxury. So maybe our clients are, um, it, it seems to me like this is not the best option, the best category to use for analysis moving forward if it's split so evenly. So in addition to those options in the analyze um, drop down, we also have some of our very popular ones are the general linear mo model, the neural networks, forecasting, regression. 
I obviously can't go through all of these during our presentation, but the idea is that if there is something that you want to do to your data, you can do with an SPSS statistics. Now, I know some of you are wondering, you're looking at this analyze menu and saying, this isn't every single test that I could possibly think of. Maybe some of you, I think there was about 4 or 5% statisticians on the call. And if you are interested in something that might be a little bit more um, niche for your use case, we have an extensions hub with IBM. So one of the great things about investing with IBM in our products is not only are you getting the years of expertise that we have within predictive analytics, but you're also getting the, the you're also able to harness the power of the open source community. So as you can see, these are extensions that people have created on GitHub, and you're able to add to SPSS statistics even if you have base version. So for example, if I wanted to do a Bensford Law analysis, I just can download this extension right here, and I'm able to utilize it within SPSS statistics. So this was an overview of some of the more popular options with working with your data. Like I mentioned earlier, it was by no means a conclusive end-all list of functions um, <clears throat> available in stats. This is our leading statistical analytics tool. And like I mentioned earlier, if you can think of something you want to do with your data, there's most likely a way to do it within our product. So with that, I am going to hand it back to Morali. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Taylor. I think that was pretty um, fantastic right there. Um, so, folks, I think what we just did so far uh, in the entire session was about literally talking about customers looking at 360-degree view and how we can actually apply predictive analytics to, you know, the data sets that you have and how we can actually club all this data together, not just the, you know, attributes data, not just the, you know, descriptive data that you have, but clubbing all these things together and trying to make some decisions out of it, right? So we do have the platform which really supports that, but what we've seen today is just like one piece of it, literally. So I quickly would take you to some more um, next steps of how you can actually leverage of what we have done today. Um, okay, so what you can do is you can actually try, uh, you know, the the, with the pieces within the platform, the products that we have, you know, IBM SPS statistics that we have, where you can just go IBM.com forward slash try SPSS, you can just go and have a trial, um, you know, which you can use. And it's so simple, very easy. You can just go sign up and pretty much you're there. You know, we can you can download, you can start using it right away. So there's no waiting <laughs> time. And then you can also explore, uh, you know, using the, um, the URL right there, IBM.com code slash predictive so you can actually view tons of information about you know how people are using it how organizations are using it what they're trying to do there's so many different case studies you know all from different verticals different industries which you can actually you know whichever you can relate to so you can actually try and uh, you know view those and at the same time we have uh, a superb community that we have on uh, you know in the URL right there um, it's the developer.ibm.com forward slash predictive analytics where any question that you have will be answered at the same time. There are so many discussions, so many forums, and so many topics which you can actually you can learn about, you can contribute to, and you can you know you can make um, you know you can really educate yourself about as well. So so there's tons of things that's happening right there. So you can try all this. And now what I'll do is I'll pass it over to Bill. You know so we can actually open the floor for Q and A. So Bill, over to you. Well, Taylor Morale, uh, thank you for that great presentation. I'm going to leave up uh, this slide during our QA so that you can uh, reach Taylor or Morale after the presentation if you'd like to, uh, and we'll get started with today's Q&A. And I want to thank the audience for their participation. We've had a lot of questions that have come in, so we'll do our best to get through all of them in the time remaining. So let's get started. Uh, Morali, you mentioned uh, and already told us about the trial version that's available on SPS Statistics, and uh, one of our audience members also wants to know if they do that, where can they go to download some uh, trial data sets that they could use when they experiment with your platform? Right, uh, Bill. So once you download the trial version, so as I said, if you just go to ibm.com forward slash trial spaces, you can download, right? And and once you download the trial version, so the trial version automatically comes with a lot of sample data sets, you know, based on 
different data sets that we have, so you can try and use the one which actually really suits or pretty much close to what you have. So there is already enough, uh, you know, uh, data sets that we have, sample data sets within, you know, which comes uh, with the software, so you don't have to really, uh, you know, uh, do a lot more uh, to get the kind of data sets that you would really want to have. Well, thank you. Thanks for that clarification. Now, uh, the audience seems to be pretty well divided between folks that are experienced uh, analysts, data scientists, and those who are not. Uh, so let me make sure that we're clear for the folks that are just getting uh, their early introduction to SPSS. And we have some fairly basic questions. Um, so let me present this one from the audience. Can you tell us the difference between SPSS modeler and SPSS statistics that you just demonstrated? And at the same time, uh, the audience wants to know about the difference between SPSS and SAS. Oh, I could take this one. Um, so um, this is a really great question for us to talk about, actually. So yeah, during this presentation, we were looking at SPSS statistics. And that's a pretty obvious question, is how does Modeler come into play with that as well? So when you're looking at the difference between stats and Modeler, the question that you want to ask yourself is, what is your goal when you're working with your data? Stats is much more effective if you're trying to work within the realm of descriptive analytics, if you're doing hypothesis testing, and if you are more project-oriented when it comes to working with your data. Modeler is extremely effective when you are working with um, predictive analytics, if you're trying to do more data mining, and if you're more process-oriented as well. And in addition to do, um, <clears throat> so sorry, the next question was about how does it relate to SAS then? That's correct. So when you're looking at SPSS versus SAS, within SPSS, we're going to give you the syntax. So you don't need to know how to code to do exactly what you need. Like I was showing, you just click on the drop downs and you have some icons there that you can choose from. So syntax is definitely optional when you're looking at SPSS statistics versus SAS. OK, terrific. Well, thank you uh, for that uh, clarification. Now, IBM is, is such a large company, and a lot of folks uh, have heard about uh, Watson uh, Cognitive Explorer. Uh, does SPSS work with Watson Cognitive Explorer? Are, are they supposed to work side by side? Are they complementary? How do those two platforms relate? So when you're looking at um, Cognitive Explorer, that's a natural language um, search engine that you can use. And we've actually seen a lot of a very happy marriage between SPSS and Watson Analytics as well. One of the things that our clients like to do a lot is they'll either go into SPSS, Modeler, or Stats in order to do the analytics and um, portion of their product work. And once they want to create a, um, once they're looking to go into the more presentation side or create a display, they'll go into Watson Analytics, which utilizes these natural language uh, capabilities that Explorer has as well in order to really work with, especially the business analysts that we have on the phone, it's designed to work with somebody who maybe isn't super familiar with um, specific methods that they want to use, or they just have a specific question that they want to answer, and <clears throat> kind of guide them along in how to dig into their data the best way and build out the best visualiz visualizations for them. Well, terrific. Well, thank you for that answer, uh, Taylor. And, and by the way, before we get too far removed, uh, from your demo, uh, an audience member has asked, uh, what version of SPSS were you using in your demo? So I was using the newest version of SPSS, which is um, oh, set, the, basically the stat subscription is what I was using in the demo, which is one of the newest ones that we have. And like Morali mentioned, if you want to try out stat subscription, very easy to find to get a trial online. And, and, and yeah, just to add to that, yeah, um, yeah just, just to add to that, actually, I think it's the most up-to-date version, so you really have to, don't have to worry about the versions anymore. So IBM SP, just go download, and you will get the latest version that you have on IBM SP statistics, so you can start using it. Well, that's certainly an advantage. I know that uh, having to update those platforms is not the easiest thing in the world, and it sounds like subscription largely solves that. Here's a wonderful question. Uh, we all know that customer analytics, you know, divides itself pretty much into questions about, you know, 
why they come, why they stay, why they go, what are they going to buy. Um, this audience member has asked specifically about using predictive analytics to, to determine customer defection. And the question is, well, uh, can I uh, get an alert that tells me when a customer is about to uh, defect? Uh, and better yet, can I get some sort of advanced predictive algorithm uh, that shows me the odds on a particular customer defecting? Right, so that is a great question. So thank you to whoever asked that. And <clears throat> so what we're doing within SPSS statistics is we're doing the hypothesis testing of, okay, is this person going to leave? I have a suspicion that these factors might be causing them to leave. Let me test if that's true. And that's what you can do in statistics. In Modeler, that's a little bit more fleshed out. And what you, <clears throat> what I've seen people do in Modeler and I've worked with some people on is you'll have a set of customers and you'll have a column that says, did they churn or not? These are present customers that you know whether they left you. And then you'll build a predictive model that the model is reading through all your customers, reading through what's, what the rules are, what the top predictors are, and is saying, okay, so I'm seeing that these factors right here are really strong predictors in figuring out whether or not this customer is going to leave your organization. And then you have a little nugget with rules for predicting that. Then you have new customer data, and new customers are coming in. They have the same demographic information as before, but they don't have a column whether they churned or not because this is, these are new customers. You don't know whether they're going to churn or not. And you can take this data and apply it to the rules that you've already created in order to get the modeler, modeler's prediction on whether or not this customer is going to leave you with a certain degree of accuracy as well. So, for example, you might get an answer that says, Modeler tells you, yes, I'm predicting that this client is going to leave you, and I'm 87% certain in this answer. So that's kind of what the difference looks like between building the rules and figuring out if current customers are going to leave you. Terrific. Well, that's a great explanation. Um, so uh, let's turn our attention towards some of the folks that are maybe a little more familiar with your uh, product. And... Uh, as a way of bridging between that last question, I know you were focused on customer uh, behaviors and customer analytics, but, but what are some of the other major areas of uh, analytics that you can uh, deal with with SPSS statistics? So I, I'm guessing that that's talking about what other use cases are a lot more popular when you're working with it. Yeah. Um, yes. And Sorry. Okay. Okay, so yeah, that's a great question. And like I mentioned earlier, a lot of our customers will come and they'll have one idea in their mind and it kind of grows into other things. And the truth of the matter is, if you have data and you have a question you want to answer, um, we can work on that in the project product. We've seen a lot of customers who, um, just like customer churn, they're looking at employee retention. We have people who are trying to look into operations and maybe say like what particular um, settings are causing downtime. We have customers who are saying, they take their weather data and they say, how is this affecting the amount of money that people are spending in our stores? Or um, <clears throat> we also have, a, there's a lot of use cases, to be honest. Um, I, I mentioned employee retention. Oh, there's also fraud detection, too. We have banks who are saying, okay, here's some customers that we have now. Which of these are going to fraud? Or if you wanted to go in the more numerical category, you could say, how much is this person going to spend at my store? How many times is this person going to come into my store? Um, the truth is, like, like I mentioned earlier, if you have a problem that you can think of and you have the data to back it up, it can be dug into deeper into SPS, with SPSS. Well, Taylor, thanks. Uh, I know that was a, a very open-ended question, and there's a long list of applications, but your answer was particularly good in, in covering the, uh, the bases. Now, uh, for our data scientist audiences, audience, uh, there are some folks that uh, clearly already know how to use program in R or Python. Uh, so if uh, the question arises, if, if we are already using R and Python for predictive analytics, what are some of the uh, reasons that I would want to integrate with SPSS statistics? Right, that's a great question. And the truth is, a lot of our customers do they are proficient in R and Python. 
And I know that sometimes when you're using R to solve business problems, it, it can get kind of ugly, to be perfectly honest. Um, <clears throat> it gets a little bit messy, and it can be hard to work through. And one of the advantages of taking that, the skills of knowing how to code and combining it with SPSS statistics is that you, you don't have to spend all that time coding the exact solution that you want, because for a lot of the things that you're going to want to do in R, it's already built out for you in statistics. You don't need to put that syntax in there. However, if you're coming across a more specific use case that you need tailored that we might not have exactly your recommendations within statistics, you can create some code and build out an extension for yourself to utilize within the program. So it's kind of giving you the best of both worlds working with stats. Well, that's that's terrific. And and by the way, yeah, I think uh, Bill. Yeah, I think oh, sure. in addition to what Taylor said, I think um, you know a couple of other things that we can actually do is, you know, there are so many benefits using uh, both of them together. It's a powerful analytical combination that we have, like R, Python, and Spaces. You can if you can integrate pretty well. I mean, today, uh, you know, it's not like everybody you have there are programmers, R programmers, or Python programmers. You know, we have a lot of people actually who, uh, who, are, who probably doesn't know coding and stuff like that, but still wants to use predictive analytics. You know, at this moment, I think extensions are a great way, as Taylor explained. So there, there are tons of things. And also, if you can actually look at uh, some of the other uh, things that we have on, uh, you know, seven good reasons you can combine SPSS and R, and there are like tons of other materials which you can, uh, you know, which really goes a little deeper into, you know, technicalities of it. So you can just go and uh, Google it or find it on IBM, explore it, and uh, you'll be able to know more. Well, Morali, thanks, thanks for that uh, clarification. And by the way, that, that uh, ties to uh, the next audience question, and, and it has, again, to do with your extensions. And you talked about how uh, you could use both the, the pre-built extensions uh, and and the custom extensions so that, for example, one data scientist could build a routine that could be used by non-data scientists. I'm going to speak to the issue of the relationship between uh, data scientists using the platform and I guess what we call these days citizen data scientists. Um, well, I guess in, in terms of it being an issue, if, if you are a, a user who's not super comfortable going into the coding and using the extensions hub, it's something that you, you can ignore if you don't want to use it at all. We, we do have a lot of customers who, like the extension hub is definitely for if you're a statistician and you need to get more in depth, or if you are a coder in R and Python and you need to be more specific. If you're answering these general questions and you're perfectly, like, it, it, it fits within your use case in order to do regression modeling, GLM modeling, some of the things that I showed you today. Um, that's all accessible within stats. So if, um, if I'm answering the question correctly, there, it's not going to be the citizen analyst isn't going, doesn't need to be overwhelmed by those pieces of the product. They don't even have to interact with it at all if it's not necessary for them. Yeah, that was my takeaway also, uh, that, that you had made it easy for the more sophisticated data scientists to create uh, tools that the non-data scientists could use within the SBSS platform. Exactly. Thanks for that great summary. <laughs> well, Taylor Morale, hey, thanks for uh, uh, some great answers to some very good questions. And, and for those of you that ask questions that weren't answered today, uh, we'll be sending all the unanswered questions to Taylor Morale and the IBM team so they can follow up with you after today's webinar. You know, I have just a few quick announcements. Uh, if you would please mark your calendars for June 29th, that's just two days from today, Thursday, uh, that's our next DSC webinar, which will be Maximize the Value of Your IoT Data, which will be sponsored by Click. Now, uh, today's taping will be available for on-demand viewing later today, and you can find that on the homepage of datasciencecentral.com in the webinar tab located at the top of the page. Well, this brings today's webinar to a close, uh, and I'd like to thank our audience for their attendance and thoughtful questions. A special thanks again to IBM for their sponsorship, and our speakers today, Taylor Perez and Morale Prakash, for their insight into today's topic. My name is Bill Voorhees. I'm very pleased to have been your host for today's event. I look forward to seeing you all again on June 29th, that's this Thursday, have a great day.